Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next installment of the Trading Psychology series. Today we will be focusing on the biggest thing that smart people get wrong about dumb trading. A little bit of a clickbait title, but this is going to be in reference to the discussion of technical analysis as an art rather than a science. And something that I see a lot of people who might come from a very high educational background, they had some sort of engineering degree, they got an a degree in mathematics, a degree in some sort of science-based subject, and at some point in time, they get involved into trading, and this creates a very massive cognitive dissonance with how the art of trading can be reconciled with that more logical, mathematical brain. So let's talk about where this problem comes from and why it's relevant. All right. We as humans in this Western society, and, and I can only speak about the Western societies, that's where I grew up in, that's the only thing that I have direct experience with, so please feel free to let me know if it's, uh, if it's different in other societies, but the way that Western society is conditioned for, uh, for in school from a young age, and also with your parents and all that good stuff, is there is only one right answer. When you go to school, you take a test, you get a grade. You either got a question right or you got it wrong. The answer was whatever the teacher deemed it right to be. So we are conditioned throughout growing up that we need to conform to the to the general specific rule or specific answer or specific so solution that the authority figure presents, right? Now, P uh, I see a lot of uh, logical minds, a lot of very smart people, really like genius type people in mathematics, in uh, in sciences, all that good stuff, really struggle with 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 understanding trading and understanding the psychology of trading because they are typically looking for that specific answer, the answer to the solution, the answer to the equation within trading that makes it a 100% done deal. Keyword, 100%. Remember, this is a game. And as far as I'm concerned, on today's date, on February 12th of 2019, you can't be perfect. I've been around the best of the best of the best traders, literally in the world, on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, and then above Chicago Board's Ops Exchange. Even they take losses. Even with the best of the best technical analysis, even with perfect, perfect technical analysis, there is variability. There is a rationality. There is imperfectness within this whole realm, again, in art rather than a science which makes it unavailable to find that perfect solution. So what I see these these more logical-minded type people get into, switching over from perhaps an engineering background or a mathematics background into trading, is that they look for that specific answer, thinking that the whole trading equation can be solved and just put aside. And this is where I see a lot of people get it wrong because it, it does not allow for that for that air of of disagreement, for that air of art, essentially, the art of technical analysis, the art of trading in understanding that there will be times when you're wrong. And this creates a very nasty dynamic because when you can't accept that sometimes you will be wrong, it directly contradicts what it takes to be successful with managing risk, which is what makes this game legitimately, you know, consistent uh, uh, upon time. That is the big related factor. If you're going to trade using technical analysis, especially knowing that it can't be perfect, how do we use even just a 0.001% or sorry, a 50.001% edge to generate a consistent income over a long period of time? Well, it's risk management. Then the edge doesn't need to be all that great. I mean, it, could, it literally doesn't even have to, it just has to be just a little bit, just a very small amount. As long as you have the edge, just think of it as like a casino in Vegas. When they have the edge, they don't have a huge amount of hedge, but just the more the more repetitions, the more likely they are to be successful. The maths and and science type people get this wrong when thinking of this as just you 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 have your secret formula, and then that's just it. And then you just write it off. And this is why I see a lot of um, I see a lot of computer engineers, a lot of programmers, uh, typically do that for the traders. That's typically where I see them, uh, where uh, they, uh, their role in the trading sphere. And believe me, there are the best of the best programmers in trading quant firms working for the traders. As the traders tell them the logic of it, I don't know a single. Um, I only know one person who who does both, but he started trading first. He, he started trading, then he said, well, fuck this, I, I might as well just learn programming so I can program my trading logic into that. And that's where 
you, the viewer, who might be one of these more logical, mathematical, scientific type people, will actually come into a very, very strong position. If you can combine your very logical thing and your very, your very passionate scientific type understanding of things with trading acumen and then program that into an equation. Now that's where true success does indeed lie. But remember, this is something that is conditioned very deep. And because people just don't want to, peop, there, there is something psychologically speaking that goes back to our primordial days where we want to appeal to an, an authority figure. We feel like we fit in. We feel like we have our place in society when we conform to that. And what is this conf, confirma, confirmation? Uh, what, is this, uh, what is this conformity essentially you know, come in the form of? Well, it comes in the form of looking for that right answer which we're taught, again, as kids, you know, in classrooms, by your parents, whatever it is, you get acceptance for having the right answer. There can only be one right answer, but in trading, there's no right answer. There's only the right answer for you, and it's ever-changing, and it can be wrong. You can have the right style. You can have the right decision from a technical analysis perspective, but still be wrong, and that's where people really get themselves tripped up because they will not they, they will be unable to accept the imperfectness of this, not manage risk, and not understand when their edge is not working, which again is what makes this consistent and what makes this sustainable over a long period of time if you do want to do this as a living. So yes, I have worked with plenty of people, um, especially when I went more public with my YouTube channel, who come from that sort of programming, that sort of scientific engineering, uh, mathematical backgrounds, all those backgrounds, and they actually can get this pretty damn well, but getting past that prior condition conditioning is something that needs to be done first. So how do you do it? How do you get past that? Well, obviously I can tell you all the answers right now. That's what I do in my programs. That's what I do. Um, that's what I do quite often on live streams as well. But remember, because this is a very, 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 very conditioned behavior from a young age, it comes with that emotional punch that emotional impact where we need to go deeper we, we need to go deeper into actually changing the emotions so that you can get away from that you know appealing to authority type thought processes and more into okay i'm responsible and i can take care of this how do you do that well and this is the big thing Repeated exposure. Repeated exposure to having the right thoughts and actions, and then your emotions will follow at some point in time. So what does that mean? Again, in, in actual practicality, it means having the right know-how and, and then applying that. That means understanding risk-reward, understanding position management, understanding risk management, and then obviously technical analysis. I'm making, you know, I'm making assumptions here that you already understand that. And then just performing that over and over and over again. Your emotions will fight you at first. They will fight you, especially if you're coming from one of those backgrounds because you just don't want to accept imperfectness. But trust in the process. Trust in the process that over time, your emotions will catch up. They'll catch up. They're slower, but they will catch up. Some people get there faster than others, and that's completely fine. But if I can tell you this, it, it, it is just a matter of time, the more and more that you practice it. So that is what I notice with a lot of people who go through my uh, my trading programs is if they're coming from one of those backgrounds, initially it's, you know, they, they might have, have some successes, they might have some failures, but it just takes that repeated exposure, that repeated experience, which eventually propels forwards the right emotions and then it becomes one within their nature and then they actually lose a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the more engineering and uh and and mathematical type um you know thinking which is you know for better or worse again if you want to do this as a living this you know it's probably <laughs> Probably, <laughs> probably a good idea. But let's actually just go look at, you know, let's let's go look at an example. What does this typically look like? I mean, you know, it could be any one of your edges, you know, whatever you're looking at, whether your secret sauce is some sort of very sophisticated, you know, algorithm between 50 different indicators. And that's, you know, that's what's going to tell you the the ultimate answer. No, or, or let's just simplify and say it's, you know, it's Stokes over here. And what do you do every time that the Stoke crosses? You take a trade. Well, what happens when it gives you a false positive? I mean, there uh, it, it gives you that all the time. Actually, it's it's certainly not perfect. If it was, everyone who everyone would use it and everyone would be rich as fuck. They're not. So, 
we need to understand that when something does not meet our standards, it's, a, it's so damn important to get into that risk management mode, which again, that is the basis of everything. I always like to, re to relate trading as a risk manager rather than a trader, because there will be losses. There is imperfectness. There is not a one fits all solution or just any solution, no matter how deep and dirty you go into the, uh, it, 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 into the actual data. As far as I know, uh, again, on this date, February 12th, 2019, I've not seen it being able to be, to be done. So understand that simplification goes a long way in this game as well. If you can't find that very sophisticated answer, which is what a lot of these guys start to look for, understand <laughs> there have been plenty of fortunes made with just using horizontal support and resistance. There have been plenty of fortunes been made just using candlestick patterns. There have been plenty of fortunes made just using two moving averages. So, so again, the purpose of this video is to show and is to get down and deep and dirty into why we have those beliefs. Again, coming back from our early conditioning, you know, appealing to authority, uh, looking for the right answer to have acceptance, to feel right, to have your val to have your being validated. Essentially, but these is what everything essentially comes back down towards, and then going through that, understanding that your appeal for that is first, it's it's wrong intentioned because it can't be done. Two, it is also not even relevant to the problem at hand because you having the right answer is not going to, it, it can't be done, but it also just can't, it's, there is nothing to be had there. There is, there is nothing to be had there. There's just guidelines and, and an art style thinking. So what you're thinking is wrong. The way that you're doing it is wrong. And the way that you carry out that interpretation of what you're doing is typically also wrong as well. So again, how do we get around all that? Just repeated exposure, repeated experience, and that is what brings all these things together. And that's where I see those people who start out in that very logical, mathematical type of thinking, unravel that and get into the trader mindset of imperfectness, but being okay with imperfectness because knowing that that does not take away from who you are, it does not violate your identity, you're not in any you're not in any way shape or form you know uh, going to be validated by some sort of authority figure whether it's the market or you know or someone who you tell that you're a trader and they think it's cool so you want to you know maintain live up to that identity no it always comes back to the fact that you are who you are you can make a bad trade you can make a good trade you can take a loss you can make a gain it's all a part of the overall process and the emotions catching up to that want to come from, you want to come from that emotional being of just being relaxed. If you can be relaxed, if you can understand that the losses will happen, that's the exact right place you want to be coming from. So again, that's going to do it for this video. Hope this one finds you well and I will see you in the next one. Take care.